Hey, what's up guys? So this is going to be the first video for chapter 10, linear correlation and regression. In this video, I'm gonna cover 10-1, linear, linear correlation. So before we get started, there's a pre-skill that you need to know. You need to know how to plot order pairs on a coordinate planes. So order pairs are X and Y coordinates and we're gonna plot it on a coordinate plane, just like this one, right? So, uh, this is an ordered pair. An ordered pair consists of an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, right? So on, on the coordinate plane, this is the X axis, this is the Y axis. And in the middle here is the coordinates zero, zero because uh, the Y value is zero here and it goes up positive here and then goes down negative. And then the, the X value also is zero. So we call that the origin. All right, so the, the first point, 3 comma 5 tells us that the x coordinate is positive 3, the y coordinate is positive 5. So to plot a point, we're going to start at the origin. And with the x coordinate being positive 3, we're going to go to the right 1, 2, 3 times, right? This is 3 on the x coordinate, on the x axis. Uh, and then positive 5 in the y direction um, would be going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. So the point right here, um, this point represents the coordinates has the coordinates 3 comma 5 all right so the next point negative 2 comma 7 uh, has a negative 2 the x coordinate is negative 2 so again we start the origin negative 2 in the x direction would be 1 2 to the left right so this again this is the x-axis and then positive 7 in the y direction would go up 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this point right here represents uh, the the point the, uh, has coordinates negative 2 comma 7. Uh, the next point here has coordinates 7 comma negative 2. So the x coordinate is positive 2 and the y coordinate is negative 2. So again, we start at the origin. The x, we always start with the x direction. So positive 7 in the x axis would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to the right. And then negative 2 would go uh, in the y direction would be 1, 2. So the that point right there uh, negative uh, positive 7 negative 2 is this point right and then the coordinates negative 2 comma 7 is right here so I want to take I want you guys to take notice um, we call it order pairs because the orders of the numbers matter right so negative 2 comma 7 is not the same point as 7 comma negative 2 all right so go ahead and push pause and, and plot these two points and then come back and check your answer against mine Okay, so these are the two points you should have plotted. So this is negative three comma negative eight, and this one is uh, 0 0.7 comma 2.5. So I wanted to put this one here just to illustrate that uh, the values on the, the x-axis and the y-axis, they, they can take on all real numbers. What do I mean by that? So they can take on whole numbers, integers, which are uh, the positive whole numbers and the negatives of the whole numbers and they can take on decimal numbers as well. So sometimes you're gonna have decimal numbers and when you're just plotting them, you just have to eyeball and just kind of do your best to put the, the dot where uh, where it looks like it's best, right? Or if it's the most. All right, so um, for this one, this one has context. So go ahead and also on your, on your notes, you should have it blank. I already plot this out, but go ahead and plot this out as well. Uh, plot the points as well. So again, uh, this context here, it says a math instructor collected data on each student's number of absences and their final grade in percentages. So X represents the number of absences, Y represents the final grade as percentages. So for example, this particular student, this first student had five absences and their final grade as a percentage is 78.3%. And this second student, 10 absences, this was their final grade and so on, right? So uh, again, Plot it out to see if you your graph looks like mine. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into the actual content. So again, we're moving into two variable statistics. Um, and in this particular section, 10-1, we're going to talk about linear correlation. So let's take this as an example again, the graph that you just plotted. So a math instructor analyzes data on student absences and their final grade, right? So this is the data. So with two variable statistics, we're not we're we're going to look at 
two themes of a particular subject. So for example, we're look in this example, we're looking at the number of absences in the final grade for each of the subjects, right? For each of the subject in the sample. And once we have the data, we want to plot it on a coordinate plane or what we're gonna call the scatter plot. And this gives us a visualize uh, a visual of of like patterns that we may see. And that's exactly what we're gonna look at. So the main point is, is when we plot it, is we wanna see if, uh, we wanna analyze if there's a pattern, right? So in this particular example, for the number of absences versus final grade, there seems to be a pattern, like a line pattern that goes like that. Except for this point right here. This point is kind of out here. It doesn't conform with the other points. Uh, for a point like that, we call that like an outlier. So the pattern uh, in math, in statistics, we call it um, a correlation. So anytime two variables exhibits like a pattern on a scatter plot, or there's like a relationship between the two variables, like number of absences and the final grade, uh, we say that that's, there's like a correlation between the two uh, variables. And in particular, in this class, we're going to look at linear correlation or patterns that have a line, patterns that has a, like, exhibits a line uh, when, when on a scatter plot. So, for example, like, if we, if we look at the scatter plot of, like, uh, cigarette smoke per week versus the age of death, you might see a pattern. If you plot out the scatter plot, it might look something like this. So, something like this, this... A scatter plot that looks like this, and it's it looks like it's along a line that uh, it goes like that, right? So something like that would have a negative linear correlation, and we describe that, or the description of a negative linear correlation is described as as x increases. So in this case, x is the cigarettes smoke per weeks, y tends to decrease. So here, as the number of cigarettes per week uh, increases, the age of death decreases. So the scatter plot for temperature versus uh, utility costs might look something like this, where it's going trending upwards, and uh, that has a positive linear correlation because there, there's a, it's all a, uh, the the scatter plot seems to be along a, a line like this line right here, um, and it's positive. Be, and to describe a positive linear correlation, it's uh, we describe it as as x increases, y tends to increase as well, right? So as the temperature increases, the utility costs, or the cost of utilities goes up as well. Height versus income, so it might, the scatter plot might look like this because there's really no correlation between height and income, right? So the scatter plot of something that has no correlation is just a bunch of dots kind of scatter out like that. Uh, there are scatter plots that may look like this. <clears throat> So something like this, there is definitely a pattern, right? There is a pattern when you look at the points of the scatter plot, but this is a nonlinear correlation. So there is a correlation, but we're, it's a nonlinear correlation, meaning it's not a line, and we're not going to look at those in this class. So a few uh, notation that you have to be uh, familiar with. The first one is lowercase r. So lowercase r is the linear correlation coefficient for a sample. And then uh, this letter, this is a Greek letter. It's not the letter P. Uh, this is the Greek letter rho. So rho represents the linear correlation coefficient for a population. And then lowercase n is the number of pairs of sample um, data. So the number of pairs of a sample data. So I want to look at the um, definition for linear correlation coefficient r because it, it is very important in this class or in this section and in also in the next section. So the linear correlation coefficient r measures the strength of linear correlation between two variables in a sample. So for example, a, a scatter plot that looks like this has a stronger it's the strength of R um, is stronger than a scatter plot that might look like this, right? 
So notice how this is more uh, close together to a line that, that looks like that versus this one is more spread out. So the possible values of R ranges from negative one to positive one, inclusive, meaning it could be negative one, it can be positive one, and anything in between negative one and positive one. Values of R, so when you calculate R, and uh, if the R is close to zero, we say there's no correlation. If it's close to one, if R is close to one or on, uh, exactly one, then we say there's a positive linear correlation. And the closer it is to negative one, we say there's a negative linear correlation. So something like this would have a, its, it's R value would be closer to negative one. And then this one would be like closer to, its R value would be closer to positive one. So let's take a look at other examples as well. So this would be like a perfect um, R equals one, right? So this, the R value for this one would be a positive one. So this is a perfect positive linear correlation. Whereas this would be like R equals negative one. This is a perfect negative linear correlation, right? It's along a straight line and it's going, uh, it's trending downwards. So this is a perfect negative linear correlation. So let's go from here and let's say it's, it's a little bit more spread out. So R for a scatter plot like this would be something like negative 0.87. So this is a strong negative linear correlation because this R, negative 8.7, is uh, close to negative 1. A scatter plot like this where it's trending upwards and the, the line that best fits uh, these points is trending up or going upwards, right? This this R would be something like 0.92, and this would be considered a positive linear correlation because the R, um, 0.92, is close to positive 1, right? So for now, I'm just giving you guys examples of R. I just want you guys to kind of have a good feel of the values of R, but R is something that you need to know how to calculate, and I'll show you guys how to do that in a bit. Something like this would looks like it's positive, correlation but a weak positive linear correlation so it's R value is something like 0.48 uh, right it's trending upwards but then it's a weak positive correlation linear correlation because the the values are the, the the points are more spread out and then something like that is um, again more spread out this would be considered no linear correlation um, R is a little bit po is positive but then um, it's pretty close to zero right so 0 0.07 is pretty close to zero so it's at the no correlation all right, so something else that you need to know how to determine is um, whether there is a significant linear correlation, right? So you can't, it's difficult to do that by judging based off of the scatter plot. We, ha we need a numerical way to do it or a mathematical way to do it. And for that, we need to know how to calculate critical values as well. So we need to know how to find critical values. So there's always two critical values. There is the negative critical value and the positive critical value. And once we find that, so once we find, uh, calculate the, the R for a data set, and we find the critical values, then if R falls between the critical values, we say there's no correlation. If R is to the left, so if R falls between negative one and the left, the negative critical value, then we say there's negative linear correlation. And if R falls, between positive one and the positive critical value, then we say there's a positive linear correlation. So in a bit, I'm gonna show you a different way to do this. You can draw this, you can definitely do this and draw out this diagram and find the critical values and place them there. Uh, there's also another ways and I'll, I'll show you guys that in a bit. All right, so take a moment, take a look at each of these four um, scatter plots and then match the scatter plot with the possible R values. So match one of these R values to one of these scatter plot. So go ahead and pause for a sec. All right, so this first one here, it looks, it's trending upward, so in the positive direction. So we know it's positive, so we, we can eliminate A, we can eliminate uh, C. So it's either B or D, and it looks like it's pretty close. Um, it's condensed in that 
close to that straight line here. So I'd say it's a pretty strong linear correlation, positive linear correlation. So I'd say that's uh, D right there. Uh, this one trending downward, so it's negative, right? R would be negative. It's got a negative correlation, linear correlation. Uh, but this one's also negative. So we know that um, this one, it's either A or C. But because this one, this scatter plot is more condensed along this line versus this one where it's more spread out. Uh, I'd say this one is has a stronger li negative correlation, linear correlation. So I would assign it as um, the R value for choice A and this one would be choice C. And this one's pretty spread out so we expect R to be pretty close to zero, right? Which makes sense right here. So this would be um, 0 0.079. Again, the R is a value that you need to know how to calculate. And I'm going to show you that in a bit. But for now, again, I just wanted you guys to get, have a good feel of what the values of R. Okay, so in this section, you must be able to do the following. Number one, you need to find R. You need to know how to calculate R. Here, here is the formula for R, uh, which we're not going to use in this class because this is an introduction to statistics class. So instead, we're going to... Uh, use the calculator. So you need to know how to find R using the TI graphing calculator. The second thing you need to know how to do in this section is you need to know how to determine whether there is a significant linear correlation. In this section and also in this chapter, there are two functions we're going to use in regards to linear correlation and linear regression. We're going to use this first function, linreg and linreg t-tests. So this is when you use it, this is the input values. So I mentioned one of the things that you need to know how to do is um, determine the whether there's a significant linear correlation. There's actually two methods. Now uh, this first one right here, this first one is the critical value method. Again, I'm gonna abbreviate critical value as CV. So this is the critical value method. And the second one with this hypothesis testing uh, this is the steps for the p-value method. So you have to know those two things, right? You need to know the critical value method, which we talked about in Chapter 8. And we also talked about the p-value method. So when I say the p-value method, you need to know that when the p-value, once you find the p-value, if it's less than alpha, the significance level, then we reject the null, right? you, you got to remember all that stuff. So And when you reject the null, we say there is sufficient evidence right on the other hand if the p-value is not small enough so in other words if it's greater than alpha then we fail to reject the null and we say that there is not sufficient evidence so again if you don't remember that you gotta either refer to chapter 8 or if you just refer to this right here, you should be good with the p-value method. Uh, for the critical value method, this would be the these would be the steps. You need to find the uh, r first, and then find the critical value, uh, and then if the absolute value of r is greater than the critical value, the absolute value of the critical value, then there is sufficient uh, significant linear correlation. And don't worry, we'll we'll go through a problem right now just so you guys can see how um, how to work these out. So let's take a look at this problem right here. <clears throat> so it says an ice cream uh, parlor is interested in whether there is a relationship between temperature during a day and ice cream cells. Data was collected and shown below. So the X variable is the temperature. The Y variable is the cells for that particular day. So for example, in this particular day, the temperature was 58 degrees Fahrenheit and the cells for the ice cream was $218. Right, and so on. This is another day, this is another day. So the question says, determine whether there is sufficient evidence to support a claim of linear correlation between the two variables. All right, so again, we, we've not escaped hypothesis tests in this section, this chapter, um, we're going to talk about hypothesis tests as well. So you remember for a hypothesis test, we have a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. So for linear correlation, of a hypothesis test for linear correlation, you're always, um, for this class, the null is always going to be um, row equals zero. 
So again, rho is the linear correlation coefficient for the population, right? So when we say rho equals zero, the linear correlation is equal to zero, then what we're saying is that there's no correlation, no linear correlation. On the other hand, for the alternative, when we say rho is not equal to zero, so we're saying the linear correlation coefficient is not equal to zero, then we say that there is linear correlation. All right, and again, for our class, the null and the alternative is always going to be these two statements. It's not going to change. Okay, so we're going to figure out whether there's linear correlation using two methods. <clears throat> the first, again, is the p-value method, and the second is the critical value method. And for the p-value method, we need um, two values. We need to compare the p-value. So we need to figure out the p-value, and we're going to compare it with alpha. So alpha is given to us, so now we need to know, we need to figure out what the p-value is. And for that, we're going to use a function called lin reg t test. All right, so first step though. First step, anytime we're given a set of data or two sets of data, right? Or two, two lists of data, uh, we're gonna have to input it into a list, right? So we're gonna input the x into L1 and then the y into L2. So pull out your calculator. To do that, we're going to um, go to, let me exit out here. We're gonna press stat and then edit, right? So I, I already put in my um, X into L1 and uh, Y into L2. So go ahead and you guys can pause the video and do that. Once you have it in here, we're gonna run lin rec t test. And to do that, we're gonna press stat and then we're gonna go to tests. And lin reg t test is one of the very bottom function so instead of going down I'm gonna go up and around and uh, there it is it's the third to the last so lin reg t test press enter so L1 and L2 looks good right I inputted my X list into L1 my Y list in L2 this frequency we're gonna leave it as one this is the alternative hypothesis and the sign in the alternative is not equal so I'm gonna choose that this reg equation, reg ec, uh, just leave it blank. And we're just gonna go down, down here and press calculate. So the p-value is right here. It's 1.73266 dot, 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 e to the negative six. So this is a scientific notation, right? Which means, um, e to the negative six means we're gonna move this decimal point five, um, six times to the left. So essentially, that value is the following. So we're gonna have 1.73 dot, 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 e to the negative six. Uh, what we're gonna do there is we're gonna take this decimal point and go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then fill in the placeholders with zeros. And let's say we round to four decimal places, then this, was, this is essentially, the p-value is essentially uh, 0 0.0000. So from here, uh, I'm gonna delete this, I'm, I need this space here. So from here, now we have to decide uh, when we have a p-value and an alpha, right? The p-value method, we're gonna compare the two and clearly the p-value is less than alpha. And when the p-value is uh, less than alpha, we, we're gonna reject the null hypothesis. So in other words, we're going to reject this statement and by rejecting it, we're not supporting it, right? That's the term we used in the class. And I'm gonna delete that, need the space there. In other words, we're going to support the alternative. And now what does the alternative say? So again, we're siding with the alternative and the alternative says rho is not equal to zero. So the alter when, when you say rho is not equal to zero, well, rho is the linear correlation coefficient for the population. So when if it's not equal to zero, then we say there's uh, significant, there's linear correlation. So in this case, our conclusion is that there's sufficient evidence. So there's sufficient evidence to suggest that there's linear correlation or significant linear correlation. 
All right, so that is using the p-value method. When we reject the null, we're not supporting the null, we're supporting the alternative, and the alternative says there is a significant linear correlation, whereas the this statement says there's no linear correlation, right? All right, so the other method is the critical value method. And this is, for, for this chapter, it's easier to use the critical value method. So the critical value method, you need two values. You need to figure out what R is, and you also need to figure out the critical value. So R, when you run uh, Lin Reg T test, it also gives you R. So here's R. So R is approximately uh, 0.953. And I, again, I'm rounding to three decimal places. And now you have to figure out what the critical value is. So the critical value for, for R, so the R critical value, you need to know um, you need to know a few things. So the first thing you need to know is what n is, and you need to know what alpha is. So you need to know two things. So alpha is pretty simple, is right? It's given to us right there. So 0 0.05. And then n is the number of pairs of data. So the number of pairs of data is, let's see, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So the 12 pairs of data, so n is equal to 12. And then we need to use the table. So it's not too difficult using the table. Here, let me just show you how to use the table to find that. So, so n equals 12 and alpha equals 0 0.05. So if we go to the table, we get the following. So um, on your uh, notes or in, in my uh, Canvas notes, you have a table here. So this is the critical values for the Pearson correlation coefficient R. So this is the table we're going to use. So here we know we have n, right? So n equals 12. And we also know that alpha is equal to 0 0.05. So that means that the, the critical value is 0.576. And again, it's very important that you understand there's a positive and a negative um, critical value for R. So there's, it's really plus or minus 0 0.76, point, I'm sorry, 0 0.576, right? So one positive, one negative. But for the purpose of the, the critical value here, we're only going to use the positive. So that's going to be 0 0.576, All right? So when comparing the two, uh, we see that the critical, um, the, the R is greater than the critical value. So what does that mean? So let's go back here. So when R, the absolute value of R, again, absolute value tells us that we're just going to ignore whether it's positive or negative. It's, we're just going to look at the positive of it, right? So if it's negative, we're going to change to positive. So if R is greater than the critical value, then there is significant linear correlation. So here, R is greater than the critical value, which means our conclusion is that uh, there is significant, and let me be consistent, and let me just put that in purple as well. So there is significant linear correlation. All right, so let me just recap. Using the p-value method, we found that there's significant linear correlation. Um, and also using the critical value method, we also found that there's significant linear correlation. Now, I worded a little bit different here. I say sufficient evidence for linear correlation. I could have said the same thing exactly right here uh, as well. I just kind of worded different, but same thing same conclusion. All right, so that concludes this video. Again, hopefully you found that helpful.